Since first learning about genetics in 6th or 7th grade, I've always been fascinated with learning about the different processes of DNA, following the central dogma from having a string of nucleotides to making a protein. However, one thing always confused me. To make a protein, you start out by creating mRNA from the gene that corresponds with the protein. In humans, plants, and other eukaryotes, the mRNA goes through a processing stage before binding with ribosomes to actually make the protein with amino acids. Go back to RNA processing, which usually involves three steps, adding a 5' prime cap to one end, a poly A tail to the other, and splicing exons. If we focus on the exons, DNA and consequently mRNA is divided into sections called introns and exons. In mRNA processing, a molecule called a spliceosome cuts up the mRNA into introns and exons and then sticks the exons together. With the introns gone, the mRNA is now mature mRNA and can go on to make a protein after the other processing steps are completed. At this point, my textbooks went on to talk more about translation. But what about introns? Why are they still encoded in DNA if they're only ever going to be cut out before being turned to proteins? As it turns out, a lot of scientists were also asking these questions. For a while, we didn't know anything about introns and just disregarded them as mysterious junk DNA. But if you've ever asked these questions to yourself, or will do so in the future, here are some answers about introns that we've found since. 1. There are a lot of introns. Intron sequences are 25% of the human genome, 4 to 5 times the size of exons. In individual genes, introns occupy around 40% of the total length on average, but they can also go up to 99% in many genes. This means that most randomly occurring mutations should fall into intron regions without affecting the protein sequences and functions, though it should also be pointed out that the extent of the evolutionary advantage of this feature isn't all that clear. Two, we still don't really know about the true purpose of introns, but it's implied that they have a strong regulatory role in maintaining successful transcription and processing of RNA. They enhance gene expression. It was found that constructs with introns were expressed up to 400 times higher than constructs without introns. And they also code for a lot of important functional RNA genes. Half of microRNAs in the human genome are located in introns, usually co-expressed with their host genes. Small nucleolar RNA and other regulatory non-protein coding RNAs are found in introns as well. 3. It's also thought that introns could act as spacers between coding regions that help to produce new sequences for new types of proteins if shuffled. This derives from observations that the intron positions seem to be conserved in many different organisms, like fruit flies, mice, C. elegans, and even humans. It's amazing how what was once thought of as junk DNA actually influences so many parts of genetics, from regulating transcription to forming the sequences themselves. But even though we know more now, there's still a lot to explore about introns and their place in our DNA.